Hi, my name is Archana Agarwal. I am an architect and I am teaching in an architectural college in Navi Mumbai. In this video, I will be explaining the general contents of an architectural design or thesis portfolio. It may kindly be noted that the applicability of the details presented herein will depend upon the topic of the project. Some of the points given here may not be suitable to a particular topic. On the other hand, some topics may need special details for explaining the design intent and those details may not be included here. The contents of this video may be considered as general guidelines or checklist for an architectural design submission. The first and foremost is of course the title of your project or the topic of your thesis. And next comes the introduction where you introduce your title or the topic. You can start with the aim and then a little bit about the site location, giving the location plan supported by Google Earth image. You can mention nearest airport, railway station, bus terminus or a cruise terminal. Basically the approach to site. And next comes the project requirements. Under project requirements, give the list of rooms or spaces required for your project along with the areas of those rooms or spaces. Mention any special requirements for your projects. Do mention the applicable bylaws like FSI, ground coverage, height restriction, marginal open spaces, recreation ground, any reservations, parking requirements, toilet requirements, and if applicable, then CRZ rules, aviation rules, highway rules, heritage rules, etc. After introducing the topic, introduce the site, that is, show the existing site plan, where you would be showing the north direction, site dimensions, access to site, surroundings, contours on site, existing features, existing structures, existing trees and vegetation, existing services and utility lines on the site, and also at the periphery of the site along the external road. The services you can show are electricity, storm water, water supply, sewerage, natural gas, telephone, internet, etc. Also show the photographs of the site. Give site data like latitude, longitude, altitude, site area, soil type, climate type, temperature, humidity, precipitation, wind rose, earthquake zone, water table, etc. Before you start presenting your proposed design, it is essential to explain how you arrived at that design. And this can be done through site analysis and presenting the design concept. You may start the site analysis with justification of the access points, giving explanation for the location of various entries and exits for vehicles and pedestrians. While analyzing the site, you shall be discussing the various parameters that are going to influence your design process. And that inter alia means that you would be also showing the zoning on the basis of the various parameters like climate, the functions, the contours, surroundings, microclimate and the view from inside to outside and outside to inside. And then you would be presenting your design concept. That is the theme behind your project or the philosophy of your project. On the basis of your site analysis and the design concept which you have presented, you will now be proposing the zoning and the circulation on the site. That is, you would be showing the site plan where you would be showing the roof plan of all the proposed buildings and the circulation pattern along with contours and all other 
features of the site. The site plan is one of the most important elements of your design portfolio. The contents of the site plan are shown on your screen. Site sections are important to explain the relative heights of the buildings, trees, other elements and human figures. They become essential if you have contours on your site. If landscape is an important part of your design, then you can make an additional plan showing all the landscape elements giving the names of the trees, shrubs and ground covers and the specifications plus details of all the landscape features. You may show the 3D view of the site after explaining the site plan so that all the elements that you have explained on the site can be viewed in the third dimension. And then comes the next most important part of your design proposal and that is building plans, sections and elevations. If you have more than one structure on your site, then you would be giving these details building wise. So for the first building, the first drawing would be the ground floor plan. The contents of the ground floor plan are given on the screen and these are self-explanatory. If you have basement in your design, then after ground floor plan, you shall be showing the basement plan. The contents of the basement plan are given on the screen. If you have podium in your design, then after basement, you shall be showing the podium level plan. Next, you shall be showing the upper level plans. The roof plan or the terrace plan will contain the details mentioned on the screen and this list may be modified depending on the design requirements. After building floor plans, show blown up plans wherever required. Then views of the buildings, exterior views as well as interior views, then elevations and sections of the building. Blown up sections and elevations can be shown wherever required. After completing all these details for one building, move to the next building and complete plans, sections and elevations of all the buildings. After architectural details, some structural details can be shown. On a strip section or wall section of the building, mark the areas being detailed out. Show a key plan for reference and then show the structural details. If required, make more wall sections to explain all the structural details. Some typical structural details are shown here for reference.
the MEP services or utilities required to make your proposed design functional need to be shown. Under firefighting, the system proposed should be described, fire hydrant layout should be shown, and the other schematics for sprinkler system or any other system proposed by you should be shown. Under water supply and sanitation, water requirements need to be calculated for different purposes like domestic, fire, flushing, washing, landscaping, irrigation, etc. And the sizes for underground tank and overhead tank need to be derived. In case you are proposing hydro pneumatic system, then the schematic for the same should be shown. The sustainability measures are the four R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle and use renewable sources. The first sustainability measure is to reduce the water consumption. And this can be achieved by reducing landscape water requirement through selection of proper trees and plants and techniques like xeriscape. The second is by using water conservation fixtures. And third by using efficient building and plumbing services components to reduce leakages. For all these methods, Sketches, pictures and details can be shown on the drawing. Next, methods of reusing wastewater can be shown. There are various methods for recycling grey water or black water. On the drawing sheet, describe the system proposed by you along with sketches, key plan, calculations for amount of sewage and quantity of treated water generated and mention the usage of treated water. The most common renewable source of water is rainwater. Give system description for the rainwater harvesting proposed by you. Draw the storm water drainage layout on the site plan and show the channelizing of rainwater towards the storage tanks or aquifer or ponds proposed by you. In case you are proposing recharging of ground, then show the percolation pits. Also mention where you are going to use this rainwater in your project. Do the calculations for rainwater harvesting potential. The formula for the same is average annual rainfall multiplied by catchment area multiplied by runoff coefficient. Runoff coefficient varies from surface to surface. For example, runoff coefficient for concrete is 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. Some of the sustainable techniques for water supply and sanitation are shown here for reference. The water required by your project for various purposes was mentioned by you in point number 9a. And now, after describing all the systems proposed by you, you shall be justifying how you are meeting those demands through the various systems. Draw water supply schematic to explain the various sources of water and the distribution system. 
the solid waste consists of organic waste inorganic waste biomedical waste e waste and hazardous waste the organic waste can be reused or recycled there are many methods of doing so inorganic waste can be segregated stored and disposed of biomedical waste has to have a proper disposal system certain sustainable techniques for solid waste management are shown here for reference ecobot waste converters are available in various capacities right from 25 kg to 2000 kg the size for a 25 kg unit is approximately 1.4 meter by 1 meter by 1.2 meters and the size for 2000 kg capacity unit is about 4.6 meter by 1.4 meter by 2.1 meter fully stainless steel as well as partial stainless steel body of the unit is available one of the most promising sustainable techniques for solid waste management is production of biogas from biomass biogas can provide a clean renewable and reliable source of energy if you are showing biogas plant in your proposed design then do the calculations for the biogas here i have shown an example of biogas calculation for reference purpose this chart shows the biogas yield and the electricity produced by different types of biodegradable matter after studying the data available on the internet and after going through various research articles i have derived this chart which gives the biogas yield per head per year for different types of waste as well as the electricity produced per head per year from different types of waste the application of this data has been explained through an example the national building code of india that is nbc 2016 also provides data on the amount of food waste and some more calculations so you can refer to nbc 2016 part 9 section 3 there is more data available on the net uh, like irena that is international renewable energy agency which provides detail about the biogas capacity design of biogas plant is provided by biogas training center sichuan china if you search for it it is available on the net besides these the energy pedia also gives the sizing of biogas plant the electricity requirement calculation can be done either from first principles by calculating the loads for lights fans ac geyser appliances etc or by taking the rule of thumb of per unit area consumption of electricity for that type of building the sustainability measures for energy would be reducing the electricity consumption and using renewable sources of energy electricity consumption can be reduced 
by using passive techniques like increasing natural light and ventilation and reducing heat gain. The details of passive techniques are given under point number 17. The electricity consumption can also be reduced by using energy efficient light fixtures and energy efficient AC system. Sensors can be used and also building management system can be used to control the energy usage. The renewable sources of energy are solar, wind, hydro, biogas, geothermal, kinetic tiles, etc. The sketches, pictures, details and wherever possible the calculations of all the proposed systems should be shown on the drawing. If piezoelectric flooring is provided, one footstep on piezo tile can generate 4 to 5 watts of electricity. If piezoelectric road is provided, then one kilometer stretch of road can generate 400 kilowatts of energy. Such standards may be utilized for doing the calculations. On the site plan, show the solar panel location, number of panels, capacity of each panel and total power generated through PV panels. Else, show similar details for other renewable energy source that you have proposed. Here I am demonstrating some of the installations of solar panels. This is a solar flat plate collector and this is solar evacuated tube collector for hot water. The solar evacuated tube collectors consist of a number of sealed glass tubes which have a thermally conductive copper rod or pipe inside allowing for much high thermal efficiency and working temperature compared to the flat plate solar collector even during a freezing cold day. Solar flat plate collectors consist of a black metal absorber plate and water pipes enclosed within a sealed, glazed and insulated metal or wooden box. While this type of solar hot water system is cheap and easy to install, the problem with flat plate collector is that they are flat. This produces a limitation to their efficiency as they can only operate at maximum efficiency when the sun is directly overhead at midday. At other times, the sun rays are striking the collector at varying angles, bouncing off the glazing material, thereby reducing their efficiency. Solar hot water systems that use evacuated tube collectors as their heat source overcome this problem because the solar collector uses individual rounded tubes which are always perpendicular to the sun's rays for most of the day. This allows a solar hot water system using an evacuated tube collector to operate at a much high efficiency and temperature for a much longer period than a conventional single flat plate collector installed system. Also another advantage of solar evacuated tube technology is that the weight and roof structural problems caused by standard flat plate systems are eliminated as the solar tubes are not filled with large amounts of heavy water. Unlike flat panel collectors, evacuated tube collectors do not heat the water directly within the tubes. Instead, air is removed 
or evacuated from the space between the two tubes forming a vacuum and hence the name evacuated tubes. This shows integration of glazed flat plate collector in the roof and this shows the integration with the facade. This picture shows facade integration with vacuum tube collectors and this shows glazed collectors used as overhangs. This picture shows evacuated tube collectors used as sunshade or as canopy. These are the advantages of solar PV street light. This is some data on average energy load per square foot for different types of buildings. Here I am showing an example of calculations for solar panel. These are the names of companies whose solar panels or solar systems are available in India. There might be many more. I have selected the 400 watt sun power panel and I have collected the data for 400 watt panel. The 400 watt panel is available in various system sizes of 2 kilowatt, 5 kilowatt, 6 kilowatt and 7 kilowatt. For each system size, the number of panels is given. The average annual kilowatt hour production is given and the estimated space needed in square foot is given in this chart. I have considered a commercial building of 50,000 square feet area as a sample for calculation and these calculations are self-explanatory. As an alternative, I have also collected data for Tata solar systems which are most popular in India and this table shows a similar data for 400 watt panel. Selecting 30 kilowatt system for 400 watt Tata solar panels, the calculations are done which are shown here. This is an approximate calculation considering average annual kilowatt hour production of a 400 watt panel. In case you want to do detailed calculation, then you can consider peak sunlight hours of your region per day and also take a factor for each season and then do the detailed calculation. The information regarding this is available on the internet. You may also do a simple calculation using the power generation factor which depends upon the climate of the site location. Regarding HVAC system, the passive techniques for ventilation are described later in this video under point number 17. For active techniques, the details of systems need to be provided in the drawing sheet. If your project consists of areas like auditorium, theater, recording studio, etc., then acoustic details need to be provided. If it is a healthcare facility, then distribution network of medical gases and other latest modern hospital systems may be proposed. 
other services like voice and data networking security and safety signages etc will depend upon the type of the project intelligent building features may be incorporated in the design and may be integrated with the building management system some details are provided here for reference Sustainability has become one of the most important aspects of every building project. The three pillars of sustainability are social, economic and environmental. The sustainable site planning techniques are reduce hard paving provide pervious pathways retain mature trees propose three trees for every one tree cut retain existing water bodies and other features try to retain existing contours preserve topsoil reduce embodied energy by using local materials use native trees and water saving landscape features provide green walls or wire walls etc on the site plan show the measures for arresting storm water runoff Show the measures for reducing the risk of soil erosion. Provide noise barriers and dust barriers. Provide ecological corridors. An example of sustainable site planning is shown here. some strategies for sustainable building envelope and occupant comfort are given here the orientation and massing of the building the fenestration shading devices shading or daylight analysis the stimulation outputs may be presented on the drawing sheet natural lighting natural ventilation reducing heat gain low impact design strategies for different climate types given in griha are represented here
this is the list of some eco-friendly materials. The details of the eco-friendly material proposed by you may be presented in the manner as shown on the screen. Provide a key plan or a key section to indicate the location or the use of the material in the proposed design. Some other sustainable techniques are shown here for reference purpose. Electrochromic glass can be used in the fenestration. It's also called smart glass. It dynamically changes the tint of the glass in response to the sun to provide outdoor view without obstruction and it enhances occupant comfort. It also provides exceptional control of daylight, glare, and energy use without the need for blinds or curtains or even low E glass. Electrochromic glass has intelligent glass control system. It uses sensors to tint automatically in response to light conditions. Glass can be tinted and cleared using automatic settings or seamless integration with the existing building management system. In addition to the traditional wall switches, mobile app can be used to fine tune the tint zones and to save predefined scene settings for specific lighting effects from anywhere in the building, wherever and whenever desired. There is also integration with voice control devices like Amazon Echo, which provides the occupants with additional flexibility so that they can control the dynamic tinting of the glass via voice command. Talking about the energy and the efficiency, the glass blocks over 90% of the solar heat in cooling seasons and just 60% in heating seasons, which provides optimized energy efficiency all year. The cost saving can add up over a building's life cycle, reducing overall energy loads by an average of 20% and peak energy demand by up to 26%. Fretted glass is a material that helps in reducing glare, in cutting down the cooling costs and in lowering the danger to birds. It also has aesthetic value. Finally, this is the list of some climate modeling softwares and architectural rendering softwares. Thank you.